and can you put a yes or a Y or something in the questions tab and then once we have that verified we'll go ahead and get started great well tonight we're going to be talking about the fair value snapback trade in gold um, my name is Thomas Wood I am the head of live trading here at microquant and again tonight talking about the fair value snapback trade more specifically the fair value snapback trade in the gold market now this strategy is used during news announcements that will cause high volatility so I'll talk about that here in just a minute uh, if you have any questions throughout tonight's webinar feel free to submit them at any time by the questions tab and at the end of the webinar I'll go back and answer as many as possible the way that we'll do this is I'll essentially go through and I'll show you or explain to you what the strategy is and how it works and then I'll pull up TradeStation and actually show you some trade opportunities that have occurred in the past um, in the gold market and show you how you could have potentially traded that had you been trading that. Now just a generalized risk disclaimer, trading or investing carries a high level of risk and is not suitable for all persons. Before deciding to trade or invest, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, level of experience, and ability to tolerate risk. This content is subject to change at any time without notice and is provided for the sole purpose of education and assistance in making independent investment decisions. ValueCharts.com has taken reasonable measures to ensure the accuracy of the information contained herein. However, ValueCharts.com does not guarantee its accuracy and is not liable for any loss or damage which may result directly or indirectly from such content or from an inability to access such information or any delay in or failure of the transmission or the receipt of any instruction or notification in connection therewith. Any past performance results are shown for illustration and example only are hypothetical and as such have many inherent limitations. No representation is being made that any account will or is likely to achieve profits or losses similar to those shown. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And then along those same lines we have to cover CFTC rule 4.41 which essentially is just saying that all the potential trade opportunities that we're showing you that have occurred in the past are hypothetical. Even if we did personally trade them ourselves, uh, we're still showing them for hypothetical purposes only to show you examples. Now, what are value charts? Because this is very important to this strategy. You have to be able to understand, if we're talking about the fair value snapback, you have to understand what fair value is according to the value charts indicators. What value charts do is they plot price in one of five color-coded valuation zones, ranging from the center green area here, which is fair value, and then above and below that we have the yellow area, which is moderately overvalued, and moderately undervalued and then above and below that we have the red area which is significantly overvalued and significantly undervalued respectively. Now historically speaking roughly 66 percent of all trading activity takes place inside of this fair value zone leaving about 16 percent of trading activity taking place in moderately overvalued and moderately undervalued each and then above and below that roughly about 2.5 percent of all trading activity takes place in significantly overvalued and significantly undervalued. So when you hear me talk about jumping from undervalued and snapping back into fair value, that means I'm talking about a price bar that has come down here like this and then jump back up into fair value really quick. Uh, it, the same goes if I talk about snapping from overvalued or significantly overvalued back down to fair value. So we're going to be covering that. The other thing you're going to need to understand is what value bars are because that's actually the indicator we're going to be using when I'm showing you these trade examples. Now what value bars do is they simply take this value chart here and superimpose it over top of a traditional open high low close chart. Where a value chart plots the movement through the five value levels, your open high low close chart plots price, the movement through the price points. And all value bars do is if it reaches significantly undervalued on the value chart, it'll paint the lower portion of your price bar, the corresponding price bar, or the segment of that price bar that is in the significantly undervalued area red. And if it is moderately undervalued, it'll paint the lower yellow. If it's in fair value, the price bar will be green. If it's moderately overvalued, the price bar will be yellow here, just like it is right here on your value chart. If it's significantly overvalued like it is there, it'll be significantly overvalued here on your value chart as well. Uh, now, a lot of people get confused and they say, my value bars, my value charts aren't matching out, up correctly. One thing you got to check is make sure your settings are the same because if you have a different analysis period on the two, then they're not going to line up correctly. So again, value charts 
plot price in one of five color-coded value zones, center green and spare value, moderately over and moderately undervalued above and below that, and then significantly over and significantly undervalued above and below that. Value bars simply take a value chart and color a price bar, a traditional open, high, low, close bar, the same color as the corresponding value level that that price is currently trading in. What's the goal of the strategy? Uh, with the fair value snapback snap back trade, imagine it kind of like a rubber band. The further you pull on that rubber band, when you let it go, it's going to jump even further in the opposite direction. So that's how you if, imagine if you're shooting a rubber band with your thumb, you pull it back, and as soon as you let it go, it shoots very quickly in the opposite direction. Uh, you use this strategy during high volatility news announcements, meaning FOMC or jobs reports, or a couple of the ones I want to show you tonight are from when they talked about, the Fed talked about quantitative easing. Uh, so you want to do an announcement that is high volatility. So you want to see a big reaction from the market. Now it doesn't always set up after the announcement. The, it might start setting up right before the announcement and then as soon as the announcement occurs, snap back in the opposite direction. So I'll show you how to identify that. That's what happened here recently, last week in fact, in the jobs report. When the jobs report came out last week, uh, we had that happen in gold. I believe it was the jobs report. Uh, only enter at the appropriate value levels and exit at the opposing value levels. When you're trading the snapback trade, the price bar might have opened here, it'll go all the way up and overvalued, snap back down, hit undervalued, and sometimes it'll come all the way back up and close right here. So you're really just trying to trade it from fair value here down to undervalued here and take out this portion of that move. Okay, so you're taking out that middle 80% basically. Now if you have a longer term outlook, you can try trading it longer term. So if you have a longer term bullish outlook and you go significantly undervalued and then snap back up into fair value, you could try getting long and catching a much bigger move and trying to catch the next several price bars going higher as well. It's entirely possible to do that. However, um, mainly you're just trying to catch that value range trade between over to undervalued or reversing undervalued to overvalued if you're going long. So let's go ahead and pull up TradeStation and I'll show you what the fair value snapback trade is. All you really need for this trade is value charts and you need to have an economic calendar so you know when a release is coming up. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is gold. This is back on the 13th of September last year. Now this is what you're trying to catch. This move right here when the market dips down into undervalued right here and snaps back up and climbs like crazy. Okay. So it's like you're pulling the rubber band down, 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 and you let it go and it launches. Now, the way that you trade this, you look at the value level. So you're looking at a 240-minute chart. You don't have to use a 240-minute chart. You can essentially use a 60-minute uh, chart or 120-minute. I personally prefer 240 because it gets a little bit more accurate, in my opinion, and also helps you catch a bigger move. Now, it has to happen during announcement. So it's not going. you're not going off of just a normal price bar that pulls down the undervalue and jumps back up. It has to be from a news announcement. And the key to this is that it has to follow through immediately. You're really trying to catch that move and risk the smallest amount possible. And it, if you're right about it, and it is going to be a fair value snapback, and it is going to shoot off like a rubber band, then it's really going to happen in a matter of minutes. So you got to be very quickly. You have to be paying attention and entering your trade very quickly. Now this is gold here on a 240 minute chart. We're looking to trade this as soon as it jumps back up into fair value. Okay, so I put a horizontal line here to outline where we change from fair value, which is the green portion of the bar, to undervalued. Okay, so that border is at 1731.80 roughly. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll look at a one minute chart on the same day. And again, 9, 13, 20, 12. You come over here and you look. Uh, if you show you here, that's 831. Excuse me, wrong day. There we go. I was looking at the wrong one. That's the next example. Let me, ref let me say what I said again before. Again, you're ch catching it from undervalued here. As soon as it snaps back up into fair value, you're getting in the trade. The border for this correct day, which is 8-31-2012, is 16.57.90. Okay, so you're looking at gold. Undervalued on the 240 is 
1657.90 is where it crosses from fair value to undervalued. So you're looking to trade it as soon as it crosses back from undervalued back into fair value. So as soon as it crosses from 57.80 to 58, so 1657.80 to 1658, you're getting long and your stop loss is going right below that. So you're really risking about $20 a contract. Nothing at all, really. So we'll pull this up on a one minute chart so you can see exactly what the price movement did after this announcement. And again, this is on 8-31-2012. So pull up a one minute chart, you can see 8-31-2012, what we're doing. Here's the price action that we see. Now remember, I drew a horizontal line at 1657.80. I believe that's what it was, 1657.90. So put this up a little bit higher, 1657.90, right there. Anything below that is undervalued, remember. Okay, so your announcement, you see the market, it dipped down here. You barely touched an undervalued and immediately jumped right back up. So as soon as it crosses back up over right here, you're getting long on this price bar. Now that move, that in, didn't end up being the entire move, but that still moved from 1658 all the way up to a high before coming down of 1664. So still a pretty decent sized move. That's about $600 a contract worth of move. That's not the move we're trying to catch. Okay, so you might have gotten stopped out break even here. When you're, as soon as you get up a couple hundred dollars a contract, you're really putting your stop loss at break even, or as soon as you hit overvalued, you're putting your stop loss at break even. The next opportunity you have, you came down undervalued here. As soon as you cross back up right here, so on this price bar, remember this horizontal line represents undervalued on that 240 minute chart. As soon as you cross back up, you're getting long. So again, you're long from 1658. Your stop loss is right below that at 1657.80, 1657.60. So just a couple ticks underneath the fair, underneath moderately undervalued, below fair value. And you can see this ended up shooting straight up, never would have hit your stop loss, and just climbed through the roof. Now while this is climbing, your profit target is the opposing value level on your 240 minute chart. So if you pull back up this 240 minute chart here, you can see you hit moderately overvalued at 1677. So you just took out a trade from 1658 to 1677. So roughly $20 an ounce, a little bit less, if you got out early, okay? And you only risked $20 per contract because you're risking two ticks inside this trade. Now you could have been risking a little bit more depending on what your fill was. You might have had to risk $50 a contract, but still you're taking $2,000 out risking $50 a contract. That's not a bad reward to risk ratio in my opinion. That's the whole goal of the strategy, is to risk the smallest amount possible to catch this giant move here. And if you held it the entire time, although up to significantly overvalued maybe, and then you were, had another $30, so you took $30 now, ounce out. You were in it from 1658, you hit significantly overvalued at 1686.50, so just below, just under $30 now. So still, very nice move, $3,000 contract. The other way you can manage that trade is just drag your stop loss behind it as it comes up. And as soon as you as soon as you break the previous bars low, essentially, that's when you get out. So you're up, you haven't broken the previous bars low until you get all the way up here, and then you break the low right there, so you're out at 1677. So you're long from 1658, out at 1677, took $19 an ounce out, not a bad trade. Uh, again, unless you have an outlook that is bullish or bearish, you're really not trying to hold this trade that long. You're trying to catch this move very quickly. And by the way, if you really want to learn how to trade this, Mark's going to be discussing this setup and the several others in the Expert Trader Setup workshop that starts tomorrow. I uh, figure I'll talk about that in a little bit though. Uh, the next example we're going to look at, now again, this was from uh, quantitative easing announcement. That's what caused this volatility here in gold. So let's look at another setup. Okay, this is gold once more. And this is on, again, a 240 minute chart. My settings for value charts, by the way, are five. I'm using a five bar analysis period. You can see here, this is on 913. So this is the correct one uh, for 913. You cross over into undervalued at roughly 173070. So you have a horizontal line going across. You know, undervalued is anything below 173070. This is where it pays to have an additional monitor on your computer. Or multiple monitors so you can have a 240 minute chart on one screen your trading screen on another uh, we talked about that in the mentorship last night but again horizontal line 1730 70 
So you're looking for it to go down below 17.30.70, and as soon as it breaks back above that, you're getting long with your stop just a tick or two below 17.30.70. So let's go and look at the one minute chart once more and see what happened here with gold. Okay, so we broke straight down. As soon as we cross back up, right here, you're long. Again, 17.30.70 is this horizontal line, so anything in this red box, as soon as it crosses out of this red box here, you're getting long. It jumped up right here, so you're long from 17.30.90. Let's say you got in even late, so you had a bad fill, you got in at 17.31, so you're three ticks off. This rallied all the way up to overvalued. Remember, as soon as you hit overvalued, you're putting a break even stop. So you're 17.31, it goes all the way up, overvalued at 17.35, so you're up $400 a contract. You have a break even stop in place, because if you're right, the market should really climb. Now, it ends up rolling over and coming right back down, but one thing you'd be watching is that even though it came back down, it didn't even have the strength to retest the lows. So it lost a lot of that strength, and it couldn't even get back into significantly undervalued. And the other thing that's saying bullish here is you had a fair value snapback on your one minute chart. Okay, so you see your one minute dropped in undervalued right here, and then jumped right back up in fair valued. Again, you're long as soon as you cross back into fair value on that 240 minute chart, which is represented by this horizontal line. So as soon as you cross above 1730.70, and this climbs all the way up, and you can hold it until you break the previous low. So you get out as soon as you break the previous low, which is at 1752. So that's $22 an ounce that you took out. So $2,200 a contract, and you risked, again, around $50 a contract. Terrific reward to risk ratio. That's why this trade is so great, because as I said before, it's like a rubber band. You pull it down, as soon as you let it go, it spikes. That's what you want to see. One thing you do have to be careful of with this strategy, though, is if it comes over like this, so it jumps up and then rolls over, if this doesn't really run as soon as it crosses back up into fair value on that 240, if it doesn't immediately start to move, then just get out of it, because it might end up bouncing like this and then just tanking. Remember, with the snapback, as you can see on the previous example as well, it really takes about one minute for that price to shoot through the roof. And that's what you're trying to catch. You're trying to catch that explosive momentum, that explosive jump that happens after that market's been pulled down and then released. So again, as soon as it crosses into undervalued and then back up into fair value, you're getting long with your stop just below that barrier right there, which is the undervalued and overvalued or undervalued and fair value line, risking about five five ticks at a time, and you're really trying to catch this huge move here that results from it. Now again, this was also a quantitative easing announcement, I believe. Don't quote me on that though. I'll show you another example really quick. Uh, this is an example from just a couple of weeks ago, or last week I should say. This was towards the end of last week, and this was the jobs report. This is a fair value snapback trade in gold once more. Okay, here's the price bar that it happened. And this is why, by the way, your profit target is the opposing value level. Because if you tried holding that for a longer trade, you might have gotten in it and then it bounced all the way back up. You were short from around 1479.80 and it came all the way down. You were up uh, all the way up to 1462 You came all the way down to a low 1455. So you had almost a $30 an ounce move, uh, about $25 an ounce move, and then it bounced all the way back up, and you probably would have gotten scared out of it and not held it for the rest of this sell-off. But this is why you need to be paying attention uh, to the value levels on the 240 at the same time that you're watching that one-minute chart. So again, this is on 503, so just a few days ago, and I'll pull up the one-minute chart and show you what it looks like on the one-minute basis. Now, remember... The horizontal line, 1479.90 is the price where it breaks from overvalued to fair value. So 1479, anything above and then back below that. You look here at gold on the one minute price, you see this actually occurred literally seconds before the announcement came out. Gold just jumped uh, from 70 all the way back up to 80. It had a $10, actually $12 an ounce move in a matter of just a couple seconds or a couple minutes, I should say. Uh, this move right here took a couple seconds. But you see, here's that horizontal line coming across, 1479.90. 
is where that fair value was. So anything above that line, so everything inside this red box here, as soon as it crosses back below that line, you're getting short, risking just above the line. And look at this move you caught here in gold. It shot straight up, overvalued on the 240, immediately crossed right back down, so you get short as soon as it crosses down around 1479.60. Uh, you probably would have had a bad fill on this, so you might have even got short all the way down around 1478. Uh, but you can see this just sold straight off and fell all the way from 1480 roughly to a low at 1455, so $25 an ounce move. In the first minute, you moved from 1480 all the way down to a low of that bar of 1462, so you had $18 an ounce move in the first minute. So that's $1,800 per contract in one minute, less than one minute. Not a bad trade opportunity, not a bad way of making money in my opinion. Uh, again, you're really not risking much at all because as soon as it crosses back, you're putting your stop loss immediately on the other side of that uh, fair value, overvalued, or fair value, undervalued line between the two on your 240 minute chart. Now, people ask, well does this work in other markets or is it only for gold? Yes, it works in other markets and I'll show you an example of another market. And this is actually, this is one that we traded as well in, Mark and I traded, this was in soy on a daily chart. Okay, so you don't, as I said before, you don't have to use a 240 minute. You can use any time frame you really want, but make sure it's during an announcement. This was during a crop report, and this is what happened here. And we ended up holding this. We made, I believe, like 20, I want to say $20,000, roughly $20,000 off of this trade. We held it for a swing trade, though, right here. So we had the crop report, and soy shot down into undervalued on your daily. Here's the horizontal line showing the uh, intersection of undervalued and fair value. You shot down into undervalued. As soon as you cross back up, you're getting long with your stop just below. And you see soy took off and really never looked back. That climbed from 12.94 all the way up to a high of 12 or 14.31. So that's a huge move. Uh, huge, huge move in soy, depending on how long you held it. And the way that we traded this is we were we had an outlook of longer term bullish. So the way, we, the way we traded it is we had the long, the initial long off the snapback. We held it all through these days. As soon as it dipped down and hit undervalued here on the daily, we added the pyramid on top of the trade, and then let it run up some more. And ended up, like I said, taking out taking out about 20 grand from that trade. Worked out fairly well. So the AGs are another market you can trade that on. You can try trading it during crop reports. Uh, it's up to you. But again, it just needs to be an announcement that is known for causing high volatility because you want to see that market really move in your direction rather quickly. Okay? So that is essentially the fair value snapback trade. I know actually that went by fairly quickly. Uh, talking about just showing the three different examples in gold and the one example in soy. Again, what I can do now is go through and answer any questions you might have regarding this trade or this setup. I remember you're looking at 240, at least that's my favorite to do it with, it's a 240 minute chart. As soon as it crosses from undervalued back into fair value or from overvalued back into fair value from the news announcement, you're going long or short, risking literally just a couple of ticks. Uh, you're not trying to risk very much at all and you're really trying to catch that huge monster of a move that occurs in a very, very short time period when it snaps back, just like you're holding down a rubber band, pulling it back, letting it go, and that market just skyrockets or falls to the floor like we saw in the other gold example. All right, so any questions about, about the fair value snapback trade? I want to make sure you actually understand it so you can potentially uh, test it out with a SIM account or something in the coming announcements that we have. I mean, we have a crop report come up on Friday that we could potentially be trying this out on. Something like a regression channel. Not sure what you mean. Does this strategy occur more often in gold? Gold's one of the better markets for it, in my opinion. I've seen it occur more in gold than any other market. It does not happen during every news announcement, so be aware of that. This is not like a trade it this way every single time there's a news announcement. No, it's, it's a when you see this occurring, be watching for it and be ready to trade it if it happens. Because if it does, you can make a lot of money in a very short amount of time potentially if you trade it correctly. But yeah, I, I would say personally that it does trade happen more in gold. 
I've seen it happen in the indices though, I've seen it happen in the ags, I've seen it happen in the currencies. Uh, you can trade it on any market. Gold is my personal favorite for the fair value snapback. Do you only trade this strategy during major announcements or can you trade it in normal conditions? Only during major announcements. You only want to do it during an announcement that is known to cause high volatility or where high volatility is expected because again, you're really trying to catch this huge move where the market, it sells off in a reaction and then it realizes, wait a second, why in the world did I just sell off? That makes no sense and immediately reverses and jumps back the opposite direction. You notice during crop reports you use brackets. How come I don't trade it using the fair value snapback? Uh, because I personally like trading using bracket orders instead of using the fair value snapback for crop reports. It's just personal preference. Mark trades fair value snapback all the time. Mark does it much more often than I do. Again, that's personal preference. It's up to you as a trader. Nobody can tell you how you should or should not trade a specific market or how you should or should not trade an event because your risk tolerance and the strategies that you like to use that suit your personality are going to be completely different than someone else's. What we try to do is show you all the potential ways that you can trade it. Mark has a different trading personality than I do. He'll trade a lot different than I will sometimes and I'll trade a lot different than he will sometimes. That being said, we're not saying either one is better than the other. It just depends on the way that you like trading it. How often does this trade come up in gold? Um, I don't, I can't say it comes up all the time. I mean, you probably have 20 or 30 times a year maybe. So like I said, it's not like it's a guaranteed, as soon as you have an announcement, this is going to happen. What it is is something you need to be watching for, being aware of the possibility of it happening. Uh, so you can be ready to jump on it and trade it if it does happen. On a 240 minute chart, it seems like you're going to have to be consistently watching the screen to exit at target range. Yes, that's why I said earlier that it helps to have multiple monitors when you're trading a strategy like this because you need to be able to watch both your 240 and your one minute and your trade screen all at the same time. Uh, that's another reason that Chart Trader comes in handy, why I like using Chart Trader because I can visually see, okay, this is where it's overvalued and I'll put my trade in right behind it. And uh, you really, it's not, I mean, you might have a split second that it runs really quick, but typically you'll have two to five minutes before you need to get out of it. I mean, you can see here, depending on how you traded this one, you had one minute, two minute, your third minute, it broke the low. But even if you didn't get out right at that third minute, it still rallied up for an entire another minute. So you have about four minutes total to get out of that, to exit that trade. So you, you, it's not like a you have two seconds to get in and get out. It's more of a you have a minute to two minutes to three minutes to get in and out. Uh, now, that's to get out, I should say, not in and out. To get in, you really have a split second. So you've got to be watching it. You've got to be prepared for it and ready to jump on it, like I said, when it happens. Because when it happens, you can see the entire move takes place in a very short period of time. Jumped up and just took off. If after the report, gold is coming down, will the chart look different? Um, not sure what you mean, if after the report, gold's coming down. You mean like it did here? Um, here, let me, I had another gold example up for a short instead of a long. This was the one that happened on the third, just a few days ago, where gold shot up right before the announcement, up and overvalued. This was the horizontal line that was overvalued on your 240. As soon as the announcement occurred, it shot back down below it, back into fair value, so you were short and carried that all the way down below. So that's one way of doing it. For those of you that are interested in, for those of you that are in the trading room with me and you see how we bracket news announcements, this is one way to position your bracket. So if you're looking to go short, you just put your, your short bracket on the fair value side of overvalued on that 240 or 
reversal if it's undervalued on the fair value side of the 240 for the long. Does it have to be significantly over or undervalued or just moderately? It can be moderately or significantly, either one. It just needs to be in one of the extreme value levels. It can't be in fair value because what you're doing is you're trading that crossover from over or undervalued back into fair value. Here, let me show you really quick what it looked like on that 240 minute chart, the one that happened here just a few days ago. This is what it looked like when gold broke back down on that one minute chart that I was just showing you. This one minute chart corresponds to this move right here. Okay? And you're trading the snapback from overvalued to fair value right there. That occurs at 1479.90. You can see your horizontal line here, 1479.90. You popped up overvalued on your 240. As soon as you broke back into fair value on the 240, it just shot straight through the floor. And again, this one you would have had uh, one, two, three, four, five minutes basically to exit until you had to exit if you were just trying to hold it until you broke the high of the bar so until it stopped running lower remember that's one of the potential exit opportunities instead of just going for the undervalued price target if you're short or overvalued price target if you're long as soon as it stops going lower lows or lower highs as soon as you break the previous bars high like you did on this bar right here you broke that high right there you get out so as long as it's continuing to push lower and lower, then you're staying in it. So I use a 240 minute chart for my base chart. Yes, I like using a 240. Uh, you can do it with other time frames as well, any of the longer time frames. But what you're doing is you're looking at the longer time frame. Uh, the lowest time frame I would really use is about a uh, 60 minute chart. But you're really the the longer the time frame, the bigger the move that's going to occur or that you're trying to catch, not that's going to occur, that could potentially occur. Just like with soy, when we traded soy, so I was showing that soy beans long example. Go to the daily. Um, let me pull up soy again. We had the long off of the snapback. Give me one second. Sorry about that. I had to sneeze. Um, you had a long example right here where you had the crop report is shot down and undervalued on the daily and snapped right back up into fair value. So you're long right there as soon as it snaps back up into fair value. Uh, this is the trade that Mark and I made $20,000 on in a couple of weeks uh, because we got long off the daily snap back and held it and then pyramided as soon as we went undervalued again on the daily and then held it and then closed it when we kind of stalled out when this consolidation period and broke the previous bars low. So that's the longer the time frame that you're trading off, this trading the snap back off of, the larger the move you're expecting. Now that being said, I wouldn't necessarily trade a snap back off of a weekly chart. I mean, it might work. I haven't ever looked at doing it. Typically, if I'm going to be trading a snap back, I'm trading it off of the 240-minute chart. So, yep, I use a 240-minute chart as my base chart, and that's just personal preference. It's up to you. Can I explain what Chart Trader is? Um, I can explain what Chart Trader is. You'll have to give me a moment, though, because what I'll have to do is log on to a simulated account because I can't show my account number. So give me one second. I'll log off and log back on simulated, and I'll show you what Chart Trader is so you can see. Okay, a chart trader, you can turn it on, just right click on your chart if you're in TradeStation, turn on chart trader. It allows you to place trades with the click of a button. So uh, let's say GCM 13. So if I was trading gold on chart trader, it would be like this. 
Okay. So you just hold down control and click it. It's up to you how you want to trade it though. Uh, yeah, I do. I use simulated accounts when I when I test out new automated strategies. That's why there's orders because I do not want to test out an untraded strategy with my money. Um, so if you want to learn more about Chart Trader, I would just say look at uh, videos. TradeStation has tutorials on how to use them, and I'm sure your trading platform does if you have have Chart Trader on your platform. How do I get these reports? CNBC, Yahoo, etc. Um, you well, we have Bloomberg subscriptions. We also you can use. Uh, it's really not. It's not a matter of knowing what the report is. It's a matter of knowing when the report is. You're not. You're not trading off of the fundamental data. You're trading off of the technicals. So it it depends. All I look at is an economic calendar. Let me change this to. 240, go back to that one point where it occurred back here so that you can see the two corresponding charts. Uh, so yeah, if you just Google, if you Google economic calendar, so if you're trading futures, you can look up futures economic calendar. If you're looking, if you're trading Forex, you'd look up Forex, Forex economic calendar. You can find an economic calendar that will tell you when announcements are going to occur. So be aware of them. And then watch for the setup to happen. Watch for the snapback. Watch for it to go overvalued. And then as soon as the announcement happens, pull back into fair value. And you trade that break back into fair value to catch that large move. And again, the whole entire purpose of this strategy is really to risk a small amount as possible. As you can see, we were risking with these trades, you're trying to risk around $50 a contract. And you're taking out two, dollars $3,000, uh, depending on how big of a move you can get. So. The goal of the trade is to increase your reward to risk ratio. A lot of times these offer great, great low risk trade opportunities. Uh, if you want to know a lot, I mean, this is just a really brief overview of this setup. I'm not going into a lot of detail on how to trade it really. But if you are in, if you want to know more about this one and a few other setups that, we're, that we trade, Mark has a workshop coming up this week. I believe the first day is tomorrow. Yeah, the first day is tomorrow. The second day is on Friday. And it's expert trader setups. You can sign up for that at valuecharts.com. He's going to be talking about the fair value snapback and several other great trade setups that he uses and that I use that are very, very good ways of trading the markets. Uh, these, during the workshops like that, during the actual trading workshops, uh, we go into a lot of detail on every single aspect of trading it, when to get in, how to, use the, how to place your orders, where to put your stops, when to get out, how to exit, whether you use market, whether you use limit. Uh, all that good stuff. So, all right, is there any more questions? I know we didn't go as long as we typically do. We only went for about 45 minutes. Uh, so we have a little bit more time if you have any questions about the fair value snapback. I hope it made sense. It's a pretty simple strategy, but it has the potential to work extremely, extremely well if you trade it properly. If you have any questions about the webinars or about the workshop or anything, feel free to email support at microquant.com and we'll be happy to help you out there. This webinar is being recorded. It'll be uploaded to the Value Charts YouTube channel. You can find that by going to YouTube forward slash youtube.com forward slash value charts. Do I use a five bar analysis period with value charts? Yes, I do. I use a five bar analysis period for all of them, for my one minute, for my 240, for everything. Yep, so if there's no more questions, we'll go ahead and end today's webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you understand the fair value snapback enough to learn from it, watch how it, how it happens, and try to potentially trade it. Uh, again, a lot of you, I'll see you in Mark's workshop tomorrow. I'll see a lot of you in the trading room tomorrow morning as well. And that's all we have for today. So until next time, happy trading.